What's up ladies and gentlemen, Ross the Boss coming at you with an all new Let's Play Europa Universalis 4. Today we are about to embark on yet another Steam achievement titled a Kaiser, not just in name. And our goal here is to start as Austria and to enact all reforms of the Holy Roman Empire. And so the goal of course is to... Um, uh, unite the desperate states of the empire into a single nation. So if we go over our political map mode and we go into the imperialism map mode, you can see all of the Holy Roman Empire's territory. And of course, my goal is to unite all of these 58 princes and these seven electors into one major nation and of course to conquer most of Europe from there. This is going to be a little bit of a different campaign than what my Better Than Napoleon campaign was like. It's going to be more diplomatic and essentially building tall rather than conquest. But that's not to say there won't be any conquest. We're going to have to deal with a variety of uh, changes in religion due to the Reformation. That's going to happen around the year 1500 to 1520. And so what's going to happen is most of the ca uh, Catholic nation here is going to change Protestant. And of course that is going to lead to a major schism here in Germany and the Holy Roman Empire. So what we're going to do is uh, before we begin anything before we dive in here to our um, you know our let's play we need to go ahead and establish our rivals so right off the bat we can see that Denmark the Ottomans and Poland have all declared us rivals so we will do them a favor we are going to rival them back but of course my very first conquest is most likely going to be of the Venetian territory. And the reason for that is we are going to get an event very soon called the Shadow Kingdom. And you can see that Venice and some of this other territory, and even Rome, they've left the Holy Roman Empire. So my goal is to uh, conquer this territory. And if we hover over this icon, we can add it to the Holy Roman Empire. And the reason for that is uh, because every time we add a province, we get imperial authority. You know, why does that matter if you're new to uh, Europa Universalis IV? We are going to enact a variety of reforms. Obviously, uh, Reform 1 has to be uh, enacted before Reform 2. And this is going to take a very, very long time to uh, finally unite the entire empire into a single nation state. It's going to be things like abolishing different electors and centralizing the government, uh, reducing autonomy in outer provinces. So our goal here is to most likely take over Venice, take over the Papal States, and essentially begin our conquest of Europe. So without further ado, let's dive in here. I'm going to bring our speed up to two. Let's establish our rivals. Looks like Denmark has rivaled us, uh, the Ottomans have rivaled us, and Poland has rivaled us. I believe we're going to rival Hungary well. We're certainly going to rival Venice. That is absolutely for sure. The Ottomans, we aren't going to be fighting them for a very, very long time. And uh, of course, Poland will eventually um, have their um, personal union with Lithuania and will eventually become all of the Commonwealth. So it will be important to stop them early. Now, if we look at Hungary, they do like us. So I believe what we're going to do is not um, rival Hungary. Instead, we are going to rival most likely going to be either Poland or Burgundy. Does Burgundy like us? They do. So we are not going to squander that alliance. In the meantime, we are going to go ahead and rival Poland, assuming that they don't like us. They have rivaled us as well. And we can see here that they have. Now we are going to establish our advisors. We have three different advisor slots. We have our administrative advisor, our diplomatic advisor, and our military advisor. So what we'll need to do is if we go ahead and produce some of the cheapest advisors, you can see that a rank one advisor will cost only one ducat per month. But as we move up into scale, you can see here that a level two advisor costs progressively uh, a lot more, so it's uh, almost quadruple what a level one advisor costs. Now, obviously, this 
price will change throughout the game as we unlock new ideas. Unfortunately, I do not want an artist as an advisor, but unfortunately that's all we have available. I could go ahead and retire this advisor, but I don't believe I will. We are also going to uh, purchase either a spy master or a trader. I would love to have a statesman, but I don't believe that's going to happen just yet. And finally, for our military advisor, we have the ability to get fort defense through a military engineer, a quartermaster, or of course, a land force limit modifier. I don't want any of these. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to go with the quartermaster. And what our very first mission is going to be is to solidify our papal relations or improve our prestige. Conquer Istria. Um, hmm, having additional manpower recovery speed and yearly prestige could be quite beneficial. Having not only manpower recovery speed, obviously we'll have more men to refortify any damage that uh, these 11,000 units or these 16,000 units take during war or attrition through the snow. What we're going to do though is conquer Istria and obviously try to outright take over all of uh, the Venetian territory and add it to the Holy Roman Empire. We are then going to move on into the Papal States and obviously right now they do like me but that is going to change other than that if we ho hover over disputed succession we can see that a lot of monarchs and a lot of kings inside the world right now do not have an heir so what we're going to do is obviously who wouldn't want to have their son or daughter marry one of the holy roman emperor's sons or daughters so of course we are going to attempt to um milan here is uh, 52 years old, um, their king. So we are going to go ahead and send over a royal marriage. Now we only have five diplomatic relation slots. We are going to speed up to uh, <laughs> level three for uh, speed. And what you'll notice is we are about to have one of five diplomatic relations. I believe just because of that, we did get an empress. Who hates me? Bohemia likes me. Brandenburg likes me. These are all electors, which we need to uh, win favor over. I believe what we're going to do... Negative 1,000 ranking. Jeez. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and improve relations with Bohemia by offering them an alliance. We are certainly... If we do this... Um, Bohemia has rivaled Brandenburg. So Brandenburg and Bohemia both hate each other. They are obviously both electors. So I'm going to have to pick one. I'm most likely going to pick Bohemia. And of course, I have the ability to create a variety of new alliances as well. Most likely going to be with other electors. We can see that Bohemia is an elector, Brandenburg is an elector, Cologne, Mainz, the Palatinate, Saxony, and Trier. Trier is very small, but Saxony, we can see Trier over here somewhere. That's Cologne, they are an elector as well. But they do have a different type of government. They aren't a monarchy, they are a theocracy. Um, Trier is right here, only two provinces. I believe my best bet is to ally Brandenburg as well. Obviously, uh, both of our allies hate each other, but, uh, you know, they're not going to attack uh, each other, assuming that they're allied with the Emperor. Ferrara here wants an alliance. We are certainly not going to honor that. In the meantime, uh, we are going to begin fabricating some claims. We might even have a claim on Istria already. We do want to take a variety of this territory, and we certainly will. Let's go ahead and uh, send over some covert actions. We want to build up our spy network. And once we have our spy network built up, we'll be able to fabricate claims. And the reason why we need claims against territories, if you're a Catholic nation, even in the year 1444, there are rules. The Pope says no Catholic nation can declare war on any other Catholic nation without a just cause. And the reason why we need a just cause is because there would uh, <laughs> Europe would revert to savagery. 
And, uh, you know, if we declared war without a just cause, it is possible, don't get me wrong, but we would lose one stability and we don't want to have that happen because right now we are at zero stability. And, you know, every uh, rank of stability costs quite a bit of administrative power. So not only will you lose one stability, but if we go into our aggressive expansion map mode, you know, every single country <laughs> that's Catholic is going to get a negative 10 relations penalty, which doesn't seem like much, but that will take a few years to tick down. So in the meantime, we have sent a uh, diplomat down to Venice. We are going to begin building up our spy network. And unfortunately, we are only a duchy if we go to our government map mode. I would love to become a kingdom and then an emperor. So even though we are the ruler of the Ho Holy Roman Empire, Austria itself is only just a pawn in this massive, massive conglomerate of states. We are going to want to upgrade our... Um, you know, our government here from a duchy to a kingdom very soon. We're going to need 300 total development, and right now we only have 165. Once we become a kingdom, we'll have a new uh, variety of new um, bonuses as well, some lower development costs, and of course we do have the ability to get uh, another diplomat, which will be very, very nice. In the meantime, we are fabricating claims by building up spy networks. And we may want to go ahead and improve relations with some of these provinces as well. Does Hungary... Uh, Hungary is in this map, and it looks like they have a ruler who is zero years old. I'm going to try my best to, uh, you know, give a royal marriage to Hungary. And it looks like Bohemia could get one as well. Do we see Burgundy in here? We know their king will die in time. I'm going to try my best and give out a variety of royal marriages. Let's head over to Hungary, offer them a royal marriage, and we are going to offer Bohemia a royal marriage as well. Not only does it give us a variety of um, you know, additional improved relations, but of course it will bring our nations closer together. If we go over to our, um, you know, our ruler here, you can see that we have a 29-year-old ruler and a zero... Uh, year old heir who's only just a couple months old if our heir were to die and we were to have zero royal marriages we wouldn't necessarily be able to get um you know we every single turn we have a chance of generating a new heir you know if we didn't have an heir to rule our kingdom another country would easily take us over and we would lose the game so right now i believe we have four out of five diplomatic relations we have a royal marriage I am going to offer Hungary an alliance, even though I will take them over in time. Uh, my goal here is to essentially form the Holy Roman Empire, and I guess we'll see what happens. In the meantime, we are not at war. We certainly don't need to be paying any fort maintenance, and we certainly, excuse me, we don't need to be paying any army maintenance, and we certainly don't need to be paying any fort maintenance, even though we only have three. Um, you know, we have saved quite a, an abundance of ducats here. And, of course, our goal is to secure us some additional um, trade. If we go to our trade map mode, you can see that the Venetian trade node, we only have about 3% of all trade inside the Venetian trade node. And this is the event that sparked my interest. My entire goal is to establish the Kingdom of Italy and the Empire. For years now, imperial authority over the Kingdom of Italy has been waning. Successful, successive emperors have failed to impose their will on the Italian states, and large areas that are formerly part of the empire have been lost to Venice and the papal states who reject the empire's right to them. Unless northern Italy is firmly brought back into the empire, the states there may slip out of imperial control forever. So, of course, this is going to be my number one goal, is to declare on Venice. It looks like their only ally right about now is, of course, Genoa. As soon as I get enough um, spy network, I will go ahead and uh, uh, not... I do have a claim, obviously, on Istria if we go over to our diplomatic map mode because of our mission. But, uh, you know, I would love to take more than one territory. Obviously, I could take as many territories as I want, but having some additional claims will mean uh, that our cores, uh, our ability to uh, set up governments in those new provinces will cost less administrative power because we do have a claim. 
And I don't believe I'm going to be taking Venice outright. It is 27 development, which means obviously it is a very powerful province, especially this early on in the game. My goal, of course, is to build around the Mediterranean uh, and hopefully take over the bits and pieces of the Shadow Kingdom. And I believe all I need are just um, Friuli, Trevisio, Verona, Ferrara, and obviously these four provinces. I don't think I need Venice. But it would be nice to uh, incorporate his or her territory there as well. We have one extra diplomatic, diplomatic relation slot. If we go into our Holy Roman Emperor map mode, we need full, we, all we need is to have one more elector um, than any other nation. So even though there's seven, we don't necessarily need four. We can see that Saxony is voting for Bohemia. Trier is voting for Hesh the Hessians. And the Palatinate are voting for the Ansbach territory. I don't even believe um, they're an elector, which is odd. Very odd. And, of course, uh, Mines here is voting for the Hessians. So right now, we are two for two against the Hessians. We're going to want to improve relations with Bohemia, Brandenburg, and Cologne. We'll do that in time. Let's send the rest of our forces down to the Venetian front. And as soon as we can, we will declare war. Let's hover over our disputed succession map mode once again. You can see that Milan, Bohemia, and Brandenburg all lack rulers. I believe what I'm going to do, looking down this list, it would be very fun to go ahead and uh, offer Castile a royal marriage, but I don't believe uh, that will ever happen. Anhalt has a very, very old ruler. Lithuania uh, might be fun to take over as well. Denmark. Uh, Denmark has rivaled us, so that will not happen anytime soon. Provence, Aragon, Castile. I'm going to offer Provence. Uh, uh, you know what? They're going to get attacked by France, and then that's going to call me into an unwanted war. What I'm going to do is... Does Castile like me? They do. Do they like France? They don't. Uh, I think what I am going to do is Royal Marriage Castile, and we'll see if uh, their uh, king dies and we get... A, uh, you know, an inheritance. Obviously, this is very luck-based. It's probably not going to happen, but of course, might as well try for it. Right now, we have four uh, heirs on the thrones of these different kingdoms. And in the meantime, our clock is ticking down. We do have a variety of emperor actions that we could press. I don't believe we will. And all we're doing right now is we should have five out of five diplomatic relations. Might as well improve relations until we get 20, um, you know, spy network. Once we have 20 spy network, we'll begin our conquest of Ven uh, the Venetian area. And that should be very soon. Now, right now, Venice is in a war with Albania. And they are only allied to Genoa. Of course, they do have a very powerful fleet. I'm not too sure if I'll even be able to take them head on. In the meantime, looks like because we do have one claim already on Istria, it will take some additional uh, spy network to uh, begin our second fabrication. Let's add generals wherever we can. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a single general. Let's go to our nobility and, of course, uh, grant us a generalship. This will improve their influence, which could, can be quite dangerous if the nobility influence gets too high. They'll obviously want to stage a coup and have the nobility run the government instead of our, um, you know, our king here. Or our emperor, I should say. A national epic. Our subjects have taken to telling tales and legends about Albrecht von Habsburg. This legend says that in Austria's darkest hour, he will return to our nation and deliver it from evil. Regardless of the truth in that statement, we could use this in our propaganda. We have the ability to improve our prestige every single uh, year for the next 20 years. Oh my goodness. 
Uh, and of course, we do have this will cost us some administrative power and some ducats. I am uh, obviously I could decline this, but I certainly will pay that small fee, granting some additional prestige. Now, what prestige does, if you're very new to the game, obviously um, a lot of you are. What's very unique is Prestige has a variety of different factors. You can see here that it will improve our global trade power. It'll improve the morale of our entire army and navy, which is very, very good. Uh, it will uh, uh, improve our mercenary cost, yearly legitimacy, improve relations, aggressive expansion impact. So overall, having a high Prestige is very good as well. It cannot go any higher than 100. And surprisingly enough, it can actually range from positive 100 to negative 100. So imagine having negative 100 prestige, getting a negative 10% morale uh, deduction from your entire army, which can be quite devastating. Now, obviously, we're only gaining 0.78 prestige every single year. So it, this isn't something that we're going to see positive 100 uh, anytime soon, or we may not even ever see positive 100. Anyway, we now have 25 um, spy network. We're going to fabricate our claim on Trevisio. And as soon as we can, we're going to dive into this war here. We have now granted ourselves a new general. Let's see who we got. 2-1, uh, absolutely garbage. But of course, we are going to try our best. We're going to recall our diplomat because we will need him to declare war. And as soon as we can, uh, we're going to dive in here. Looks like there are a lot of enemy allies that I didn't want to see happen. Uh, Hungary will join us. East Phrygia, Genoa. This is because they are part of a trade league, and I believe they are the leader here. Leads a trade league with Friesland, East Phrygia, and Lucca. All of these countries are garbage, and they, are, <laughs> they won't be able to stand our imperial might anytime soon. Well, I am going to go ahead and end this episode here, and on our next adventure, we're going to begin our conquest of Istria and most likely Friuli. Thanks again for joining me, everybody.